Are we good? All right, let's start with Village of Minerva Park Council meeting October 12th. Roll call. And let's do roll call. October 26th. 26. Oh, I'm reading the meeting minutes. She started at the very top. Oh, that's why, because this is wrong. Yeah. Well, it does say October 12th. See, I don't, yeah, we already talked about we don't even update this. Okay, roll call. Let's start with Council Person Bruger. Here. Council Person McNamara. Here. Council President Wolf. I am in attendance. You are. I am. All right. Council Council Person Benedetti. Here. And McNamara. Did I do McNamara? You did. I did. You already did. You threw me off. Um, Council Person Curl is not in attendance, and Council Person Trump. Here. All right, so we got minutes. Okay. No, yeah. we're doing Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah, we're all oh, Well, we'll take that. <laughs> I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Meeting minutes, October 12th, um, since that is in the past. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Conventions? Yeah, and uh, now here we are at green cards, and as we have one resident here, and he's already filling out his green card, that is good. Yep. But should anybody else walk in, and they're watching the live stream on their way in the door, there's some green cards over there, fill them out, get them to us, and uh, we'll get to you in the appropriate section. All right, um, we have in attendance tonight um, our village engineer. Um, we are going to have him give us an updated report um, instead of myself giving it like I normally do. So let's flip over to Mike Flickinger and let him kind of, do you want me to say some of the reasons or just do you want to give an overall update? I can just give an overall update. If yeah, you want. I feel like he needs like a like a fanfare, like a trumpeting. I know. Leading. We only get him a couple times a year, so yeah. okay. I, I have <laughs> My head's getting getting bigger. Um, Aww. <laughs> All right, uh, go ahead. Really, I I just want to I intend tonight to focus just on the uh, 2021 storm sewer project, the East Core East Shore Court project. Um, the primary reason I'm here is because uh, I'll just use council use loosely uh, rather than single out any individuals, but I've gotten a number of email messages about this project and asking some questions and um, some of the information I think within those email messages isn't correct and if, if put forth out into the community it would be uh, misinformation and and just general sort of some misunderstandings and some general questions about the project. So uh, I'll just kind of, I'll kind of, no, I won't kind of, I'll step through it. And uh, then if council or anyone else has any questions about it, um, please, please ask. But I felt it would be good to remind everybody of what happened, where we are, et cetera. So um, this is just a summary. So three bids were opened and publicly read aloud on September 3rd, uh, 12 p.m. Jacobs, we prepared an unofficial bid results sheet, um, including the three bidders that were read aloud. The bid results, unofficial bid results were posted to the village's website, and then we distributed them to the plan holders list. After distributing the unofficial bid results, there was a fourth bid that uh, was discovered in the village's mailbox. So uh, the mayor contacted us and just said, hey, we have this fourth bid. Uh, how do you recommend we proceed? And we su I suggested that the mayor not open the bid until she could consult with legal counsel. <clears throat> so legal counsel, Jesse, uh, worked within his firm, Frost Brown Todd, talked to a number of construction experts and figured out what should be done. And counsel recommended on September 8th that the bid be open and be evaluated as if it were um, with the other three bids at the same time. And that information was provided, that was based on information that was provided by predominantly the USPS, which had documentation that showed that the bid 
was received at the municipal building by the date and time um, identified in the bidding documents. Strangely enough, the fourth bid was actually the apparent low bidder, which we, we being Jacobs, thought might be the case because before I even got back to my house, uh, I had an email message from this fourth bidder asking why his bid wasn't open. And I figured he probably wouldn't be asking if he weren't low. So we had an indication that it might be the low bid. Uh, we reviewed the bid. There were no deficiencies with the bid as submitted. They acknowledged the addendums. They submitted the information they were supposed to submit. We contacted the references that they provided with their bidding documents. We actually asked them for some additional references and, um, that were more, a little more geared towards the project that we're going to be uh, constructing. We contacted those references. Everything was fine. Uh, so we recommended that the village award the contract to the low bidder, which was its DJX construction. So then the village had already had two readings to enter into an agreement with the low bidder. So after we made our bid recommendation, the village passed or uh, had the third reading, passed the legislation as an emergency. Legislation went into effect. So um, Jacobs, we prepared the contract books and then sent them along with an executed notice of award to the contractor. So while we were coordinating the documents with the contractor, we started talking to them about a proposed start date for the project. You know, when do you think you can realistically start the work and then we'll base the notice to proceed off of that because we didn't want to issue a notice to proceed on a date that was unachievable and then we'd have to issue a contract extension and things like that. So DJX consulted with their material suppliers and got back to us and said, well, one of the problems we're going to have right now is uh, the piping suppliers, the, the pipe suppliers, are all running significantly behind. So they were expecting a six to eight week delivery time frame. So after they executed the agreement, after we gave them a notice to proceed, after we reviewed their shop drawings, it was likely that they wouldn't receive pipe on site until very end of December. So the contractor asked if the village would consider delaying the start of the project until probably March of 2022. Not, you know, not preferred, but considering that if we get the materials in December, we'd be excavating, backfilling, all of that work in the winter, plus trying to place concrete in temperatures that the specs would generally prohibit concrete being placed. There really wasn't a good option to let them go forward with the project and get the project that we designed and that you're paying for. It was not a good use of the village's money to try to get that done. So we recommended after talking to some, you know, talking internally and confirming with the contract documents, we recommended to the village, let's delay the start of the project on site work until the spring. The mayor consulted again with legal counsel just to make sure that everything was okay. We talked about some documentation that we might want to put in place. After that consultation, the mayor agreed that delaying the project would probably be best for the village's funding. So we reached back out to the contractor and said, hey, this, this is an acceptable request. And right now construction is tentatively scheduled to begin March 13th, 2022. What we intend to do in this interim is, we'll, we're gonna have to work some paperwork out, but what we want to do is let the contractor get all of their paperwork done, get all their submittals complete so that they can go ahead and order their materials and have everything on site by March 15th. Um, what we're finding is that that's what most projects are having to do right now. Um, so that's, that's where we are as far as the contract. You know, they're, they're, I think they've returned the executed agreements to the village, so we'll just have to have the mayor execute those agreements. There's a little bit of insurance paperwork that I consulted with legal counsel today just to confirm what the documents required for insurance. So the contractor will be sending insurance information to put into the contract books here shortly. 
But beyond that, I did want to just step through some of this, like a, basically a summary and talk about some additional items that have come up in these various email messages and I just want to address them. So um, the decision to open and consider the fourth bid was not made solely by the village and it was not made solely by Jacobs. Uh, everyone consulted with legal counsel and they provided the guidance and input. And we didn't make any decisions until Jesse weighed in and said, this is what you can do and we feel confident and you are protected and going forward like that. So we didn't do that with any, you know, it wasn't unilateral and it wasn't without thought. Um, again, we reviewed the contractor's qualifications and concluded they are appropriate for the project. In fact, this contractor is on the City of Columbus's approved contractor list, so they do this work regularly. Um, the contractor's request to delay construction due, due to the delays in receiving materials, I, I wouldn't have recommended that to the village if I didn't think that was legitimate. I mean, I think everyone is aware and is probably tired of hearing about the quote supply chain, um, but this isn't just a Minerva Park thing. I mean, I sat in a, I sat in a bid review meeting two weeks ago for a nearly $75 million project, and we're having the exact same conversations. They wanna go ahead and get orders placed so that process equipment can be here when they're ready to start 18 months from now. So this isn't just a Minerva Park thing. This is, every project is facing this. I just talked to one contractor uh, a few weeks ago that said when they're looking to bid projects right now, if they don't think there's four to six months of somewhat fluff in the contract, they're not even bidding it. Because what they're doing is they're going, they're bidding the jobs, and then they're getting all their paperwork done because they can't get anything on site for six months. So this, this I was not, I would have been more surprised if they hadn't said something about materials. Um, the term or the length of the contract has not been extended. Um, the bidding documents, they don't include a specific end date. We did not put a specific end date in there because we, we rarely ever do. There's no, there's no um, regulatory reason to put an end date. It's difficult to put an end date because council moves at different paces on different projects. Sometimes you guys are willing to pass things by emergency, sometimes you don't want to. And so you can't put firm end dates into the bidding documents if we're not sure how the legislative process is gonna go. So there's not a firm end date, but rather there's, they have to complete the job within a specific amount of time after we give them a notice to proceed. So they have not been issued a notice to proceed. So currently the clock is not ticking. So the project has not been extended um, there was never any hard deadline to complete this project by December 31st, 2021. So I, I just want to point that out. Um, and similar, similarly, to say that the low bidder is unable to perform this job on time, which this year is what was mentioned in the email messages, that's just factually incorrect. One other thing that was brought up was it was not illegal, I think is how it was phrased, but um, imp improper or it wasn't in the village's best interest. Uh, why did we not, when DJX mentioned that they couldn't, you know, when they asked for an extension, or a, I shouldn't even say an extension, when they asked to delay the start of the project, uh, why did we not contact the second lowest bidder to see if they could do the job this year? So to game that out, and legal counsel, please chime in if you think I misspeak on any of this. To game that scenario out, this is what would have to, this is what would have had to happen. So first we would then have to contact the second bidder, ask them if they are interested, in the project still, and are they available? Knowing that they've already started bidding other work and pursuing other work. Then, if they were interested and available, 
then the village would have to file or follow some legal process to basically disqualify a bidder who has already been legally awarded the contract. And I just want to point out, the village would be trying to replace a bidder who satisfied all of the criteria included in the bidding documents. So that would have been a very tall hurdle to clear, I think, to reverse course and disqualify someone who you already deemed was worthy of getting the project. So I'm not even really sure how you yeah. would have done that. Mike, but used, Mike used a lot of words to what I would have said, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you put it nicely though. That's so, a great way to answer it. <laughs> the first time that the engineer is wordier than the, That's than right. the lawyer. That's true. Um, then let's say you, you could have done that. Um, then council would have had to pass legislation to enter into an agreement with the second bidder. Then we'd have to pull that stuff together, get everything out to the contractor. And then assuming there were no legal challenges from the replaced bidder, even if you could have done it, all of this stuff would have taken probably six weeks to get through. Meaning we wouldn't even, we, we found out, DJX asked us about the delaying the start on October 4th. So six weeks, we wouldn't even be, it would take us until Thanksgiving before they could even start ordering materials. So I mean, we'd be into 2022 anyway. So I mean, asking the second bidder anything would have actually, would actually take more time than, than what we're facing. So um, I just want to point that out. It's, it's, it sounds like a very simple thing, but it's, there, there's a lot going on there. Um, and then, then finally, I, I, do, I want to point out that the bidding process was not changed in any way. This is the exact same bidding process that we've followed with council, I mean with the village for every project that we've bid here. I mean we didn't do anything different. Um, this is definitely odd. I don't know if you've ever had this situation. I know I've never had this situation. No, I mean this is a, like I said, this is a COVID, people use COVID for a lot of excuses, but the, you know, that's the issue with the certified mail is they, like they, they're not doing certified mail because of COVID, but it was here delivered on time. We're looking at ways that this will never happen again. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. so I, I want to point out, like, there weren't any, nothing changed to favor anybody. Um, it was just odd. It was just an odd situation. Um, the process satisfied the bidding documents, and this word keeps getting thrown around in, in this email correspondence, and we have to be very careful. The bid was not late. Like, we, I mean, right. It, That's it, right. it, that, if it were late, we wouldn't even be having this conversation, but it was not late. Like it was deemed to be delivered on time for the contract documents. So I would caution any council member, anybody using that word because we've determined it's not. Right. Um, so, but Jesse alluded to it, uh, and, and this did come up in the email message in a, in a, in a roundabout way, but after this happened in our email traffic, um, I asked the mayor and she authorized um, to um, gonna spend about four hours, up to four hours, uh, researching electronic bidding options that the village can use. Um, there are a couple different softwares, is that right? a couple different types of software uh, that's available. Um, I've seen one personally that seems to be well liked and I'm gonna talk to a couple of municipalities that use that software and I'm gonna provide that information to the mayor. Uh, the goal is to provide it by the end of the year. Um, the nice thing about that software is that it can be used for any any bidding that you do, any bidding that you do, not just capital improvements projects, but you can use it for leaf pickup, you can use it for trash pickup, you can use it for anything that requires a <coughs> bid, you can use this software as for bidding. So I think it will, ha it will have a benefit beyond. So basically, just to give a very quick overview of what these things do, because of the way bids are required to be submitted, you can't just email a bid into the village because then someone has access to it and they're supposed to be you know, unopened until they're to be read aloud. So these, what these electronic bidding options do is it's actually almost like a 
it's almost like an electronic lockbox where a contractor has to have an account and they all have the accounts with these various things and then they just submit their bid and it goes into this electronic lockbox that the village has no, you can't get to it. Like you, no one has access to those bids until they're to be open. And then at that point, then the village is able to download them and then you read them. What's nice about it is the contractor, they can submit a bid and if they realize they made a mistake, they can just pull their bid out and put their new bid right back on top of it. Um, and it's, like I said, it's, it's, they're becoming more popular. I think ODOT uses electronic bidding almost exclusively now. Um, a lot of communities in Central Ohio use, use this for capital improvements projects. So you won't be serial number number one you know, you won't be necessarily blazing a new trail. Um, there will be a lot of people who have done this. So, um, I, I think it's going to be good for the village to, if we can find a solution that works for the village. So. Yeah, because I don't think mail service is going to get any better. <laughs> and it's part of the issue is that you guys have office hours. I mean, that it's not every community has, you know, a lot of times bids are being delivered to places that are staffed the entire business day. And you guys just aren't necessarily always staffed like that. So right. Well, the crazy part is, is we were here that day. I know. <laughs> we were all here that day. Yeah. We were here that day. But it was so, delivered. So anyway, that's, I guess that's a summary or an overview of this particular project. I did not go into the history of East Shore Court because that's... <laughs> Yeah, no, thank that, you. that could be a, a much longer conversation. But, uh, okay, does anybody, anybody have any questions? I guess the one question I have is, is there, are they going to honor the price? In the yep, That's, okay. that is our understanding. We're asking them to put that in writing. Okay. Um, part of our email correspondence was that the general conditions of the contract as written don't offer them really any opportunity to increase their prices for this situation. Um, but we're, because this is a different situation where we've asked for a little bit more clarity, documentation on that than is necessary because we are finding on um, construction projects that um, we're seeing requests for increases that we've never seen before. I mean, prices are, on certain materials, suppliers are holding prices for a day. Mm -hmm. they're, holding, they're holding prices mm -hmm. for two days. I mean, depending on what it is. Uh, I have one project where the, the unit price of, of, a, of a steel casing pipe has, has doubled from the time that they bid it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, y y these are things you have to work out with the owner because you're, you're not unsympathetic to them, but unless there's, unless they're willing to invoke certain clauses within the contract, which have a lot of effort behind them, you know, so it, it's tough sometimes for them to try to recover the cost, but we, we're finding a lot of, a lot of owners are trying to work with contractors because they know contractors are in a bad spot too, because they're just things I mean, just things beyond their control, and I, Jesse alluded to it. I mean, I think people are kind of almost tired of hearing of you know COVID being an excuse for a number of things. But you know, a lot of these things, when you're just talking about materials are in short supply, staffing is in short supply, labor is in short supply, and it just all is starting to add up. And so I, I think I think everyone's trying to work through it together, but. Oh, I Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming. You're welcome. Did you have? No. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mike. I know that was a lot. I know we've discussed it multiple times, but I just kind of wanted to make sure that it was on the record um, from somebody other than myself. Um, so we had both legal and uh, Mike Flickinger uh, come to this meeting. So I, I, I would just like to, since you're here, uh, in terms of the issue of court, what is realistically, I know, you know, March around here, you have to work around the houses um, with the rights away and all that. And it's pretty muddy and all that. What is your is your, your best guess on on completion? Do you think it'll be completed by summer or? They have uh, I think the contract documents it's a 90-day project. 
So they have three months from the note date of notice to proceed. So they feel pretty confident about getting in there in mid-March. Mid-March. So okay. you figure three months mm -hmm. from there, looking at possibly mm -hmm. mid-June. Okay. Thank you. Do we do that now? Well, I was going to ask. So, yeah. Mr. Scobie, yeah. we don't have a planning and zoning section of the meeting on the agenda tonight. Are you okay to hold this to citizens' comments, or you can go now? I'll go now. Go for it. So, to the podium, give us your name and address, and uh, you'll have three minutes. Did we set this up? I didn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go ahead. Did start? Go ahead. I got you. I understand some are tired of hearing what sounds like the same thing to me. However, it has not been 30 minutes of me talking about the same thing as has been claimed. I've made system comments in three recent council meetings, at the most two times in each meeting that were three minutes or less. I don't think Brian can be talking beyond that. Is that right, Brian? Okay. That's a maximum of 18 minutes. Yet it's likely a total of 15 minutes or less. And I spoke at the last community council meeting, or community, community committee meeting last week. I only spoke for about five of the 50 minutes I was there. I have not always said the same thing about each time or talked about the same topic. Yet that is how people tend to characterize the situation, label people when they do not want to hear about it. It seems there must be something about this topic that rubs some of you the wrong way. Now the village allowed the addition of the sidewalk, planning of trees, retaining walls, and fence along the view to be made by MI, even though I believe some could exist that normally might limit some of those types of changes. My sidewalks and similar trees are in the right of way on um, the MI homes. These two changes were not applied to any other existing residential properties in the village. The addition of the retaining walls and fence along the view are unique to these four properties. They are not in the MI development. They do not have the same obstructions as we do with maintaining the right of way where they live. You are all aware the fences were built for aesthetic purposes and for the financial benefit of the MI development. I understand many, including the mayor, think the fences look great. However, these fences do not seem to look great enough for them to be placed in the right of way along every property, or even properties in the MI development. They apparently do not look great enough for the village, feels it's beneficial for the village to provide all the maintenance related to these changes along Farview so that everyone that enjoys them can equitably share in the cost as opposed to just the four foot homeowners. This type of fence is not the best barrier to deter school children or other people from our property. If anything, this fence is maybe inviting to climb on or over, which might lead to someone getting hurt or worse. These fences also contribute. Let me stop. No, you still got about 40 seconds. These fences also contribute to an obstructed view by some vehicles that go through the River Lake Road and Farview intersection. I've seen plenty of people not come to a complete stop or barely slow down when going through it. With the addition of the two new schools being built on Farview, the amount of foot traffic, particularly children, is only going to increase. Just to be clear, I did not make up what I labeled what might be the village motto of, if you do not do it, we say we just go ahead and stick it to you. That was one of the com comments stated by village planner Eric Fisher on video during a public meeting with the mayor and council. Makes one wonder what things are said or done at other times when it's not during a public meeting and right. not being recorded. And that, that's your time. Thank you. Okay. I don't know how to work that. Yeah. Hey, I figured out how to turn it on this week. <laughs> and it's actually okay. easy. Okay. Does anybody have anything? Remove. Go to next. We um, are working on the estimate for that still, I'm assuming, that we discussed at the last community meeting. Estimate for removal? Yeah, that we were discussing. Eric, have you, done, have you made any phone calls for that? Sorry, Did we? Oh, okay. Um, so we'll talk about that okay. after a while. All right. And turn it over to Mark. Okay. Legislative for tonight. First, we have Ordinance 14 2021, an ordinance contracting FB. FBT Project Finance Advisors LLC for advice related to certain municipal projects and related finance options. Second reading, this would be the uh, money well sort of finance advisor of uh, the firm that Jesse, our current lawyer, is involved in and look at ways to 
finance the renovation of the community building as well as perhaps some work on the lakes. Second reading, that's all we need. Ordinance 15 2021, an ordinance to make supplemental appropriations for the current expenses of Village of Monroe Park for the year 2021. And we are looking to waive readings, I believe, on this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, the big thing we're doing here is we are taking 40000 out of the capital outlay budget and putting it into contractual services. Um, there's uh, another resolution coming up hiring some contractual services to do uh, sewer, sewer camera work, right? Um, this is for the survey services for the 2022 storm sewer project. This is actually the Jordan Road behind all the houses. This is the new 2022 project. So this is moving money so we can authorize them to resource international. And then in addition, we have $69,000 in American Rescue Plan Act money um, that can be used for things like public health, of which sewers and waterways are a part of. So we would be moving $69,000 into the capital outlay budget uh, of American Rescue Plan Act money. And that's for the sewers also? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That's sewer, storm sewer maintenance capital. So both outlay. of those are for the sewers? Yeah. The, the whole thing is for the sewers. Yeah. yeah, the whole thing, yeah. And we're taking 40 from the capital, putting it into the contractual, and we're putting 69 into the capital. Um, and I'm going to move that we waive the second and third reading. Second. Moved and seconded. All right. Council Person Berger. Aye. Council President Wolf. Aye. Council Person Benedetti. Aye. Council Person Trim. Aye. Council Person McNamara. Aye. Okay. Eight. All right. That's five. So that should be enough. Um, now that we've moved in, uh, on to our third reading, essentially. I move that we pass it. Second. Anyone want to discuss? Let's go roll. All right. Council Person McNamara. Aye. Council Person Trick. Aye. Council President Wolf. Aye. Council Person Bruger. Aye. Council Person Benedetti. Aye. All right. All right. Getting some sewers moving along. May I ask a question? I, sure. I, I apologize. I, I didn't hear the, um, or I, didn't pick up on how that was introduced. Was that passed as an emergency? No. We're so not there yet. It's no. an appropriation. Okay. So We're not there. Okay, I just, yeah. I'm hold just tight, trying to figure out tight. what work I have to do tomorrow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. The goal is you're working tomorrow. Okay. We'll be there. I apologize. It's, I, I, it, I'm out of practice. I haven't been here. Before. That was just the appropriation. <laughs> you're too away from that. Okay. <laughs> okay. And our next one it's just is a first just a first reading. Here we go. Resolution 2021-32. A resolution authorizing the mayor and fiscal officer to enter into various reoccurring contracts necessary for the continuous operations of the village. Um, for those people... That we do every year. Yeah, it's the stuff we do every year. I'm looking at There's a huge list. I'm sure it will be online in the packet. It's but perfect. things like mosquitoes spraying... Our payroll services, village engineer and legal, Franklin County Public Defense, Health Department, stuff that happened, Franklin County DOI tax force is on there for some reason. You think they pay for themselves as tickets. <laughs> um, you still got to sign a contract. Yeah. Um, and that's and just, you know, if you guys have recommendations or if there's something you guys can think of, and I've done the same thing with fiscal and um, with chief, if there's something we need to add or take off, um, it's not going to be an issue. So. It's just the first reading. We wanted to get it on the books to get it read. Is is uh, Jesse's or your is your firm going to be able to provide a prosecutor to replace Kelly? Uh, yes, we have that. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That so, is the goal. Yeah, and there's that's what's it down here. Legal services prosecutor. Well, it's got her name on it. Right? Oh. And yeah, Unless so she it's joined the firm. She's yeah. not. <laughs> not to my knowledge. So that will be yeah. We'll remove her name. Yeah, Kelly Roth is still on there, but we are planning on using, so we'll just remove her name. Um, because, again, that's one that doesn't need to be on there, but Frost Brown Top is on there. Nice pickup on that. It's a good catch. 
Okay. I catch as many as I can. Uh, if you, you, you get an A plus for that one. <laughs> Gold star. Oh, okay. Gold star again. Two weeks in a row. I'm not done. <laughs> Anyone? Uh, anything else on that one? Questions, comments? All right, moving on to resolution 2021-33, a resolution authorizing and approving, excuse me, approving the execution of a contract with Resource International Inc. for survey services for the 2022 storm sewer project and declaring an emergency. Um, if you are familiar with what we just did a few minutes ago, we moved $40,000 into contract services to cover this cost. Mayor, you want to tell us about it? No, when we have Mike tell you about it. Mike, you want to tell us about it? That's right, we have Mike here. I'm going to put you on the spot again. Worth that over yeah, I mean, <laughs> seeing as how I just rushed it along just the, earlier. Yeah, just the, just the reader's <laughs> so, digest version. Yeah, so basically, this is just the surveying services uh, associated with the 2022 storm sewer project, which will um, be addressing the, the concerns of the sewers on the north, the, the back part of the Jordan Road properties. Um, so we've asked Resource International to get a, a very large survey area. We're actually going from just north of the uh, Minerva Park boundary, so going into Columbus to get onto the Northland Plaza site because we probably will have to tie into their sewers if we can. And we're going all the way down into Jordan Road just in case there's an opportunity to rather than go behind the properties on Jordan Road, perhaps jump south and tie into the Jordan Road storm sewer. Um, we, we didn't want to cut that out and then find that might be an option and then have to send someone back out and do it. So it's, it's a pretty large, it's basically, you know, almost from the Yasmin International Market shopping strip pretty much all the way to the North Lake from the municipal boundary on the north side to basically the southern edge of Jordan. Just if I might for a second, are there any things we're anticipating finding? Anything? Are, are we expecting good, good condition sewage or pipes? Are we expecting poor condition? What are we? No, this is just survey. This, this is, is just oh, survey. This is topo survey. We already, oh, did, okay, okay. we already did the CCTV work over there, and it's it needs to be replaced. <laughs> oh, well, no, it's a mess. Yeah. <laughs> so that's so this is this will be the project to do that. Okay, sorry, I must have got myself. No, nope, that's okay. It's, yeah, it's so been. Far. It's it's been a thing for a, a number of years over there. So, all right. All right. And the cost of this project shall not exceed forty thousand forty five. Excuse me, thousand dollars. Correct. All right. And this uh, yeah, this sure. survey work. Oh, would this be mm -hmm. people wandering around in people's backyards? Yeah. Yes, and all the residents we sent notification letters to the village for the village to distribute. I just got mine. And I think Dennis said Bob Barb. Yep. So everybody's been notified. Okay. And then the uh, resources field staff, they have, they will have, or they're instructed to have copies of the letters. Yep. So. And um, little orange flags and tripods and whatnot. Yeah, and I mean, if I understand it correctly, by law they're entitled to go on the oh, property. Yeah. Yep. I mean, the the, Could you notify, the, yeah. the the notification letters are. I think you're supposed to notify people that they will be there, but. We quote the ORC code that allows them to go onto the property. And the notification letters talk about what surveyors are expected to do. They're supposed to, you know, not disturb anything that doesn't need to be disturbed, et cetera. But we also tell residents they don't know what's going on with the project, so please, please don't ask them about the project. <laughs> Call the mayor. I think, I think that's what we say. <laughs> I think it's Perfect. I think it's either your phone number or Randall's phone number. No, it's I've, totally fine because all of my neighbors talk to me about it anyway. So it, it's a welcomed it's a welcomed group of people in their backyard at this point. So so you mentioned it going to north all the way to North Lake, but is it basically on Jor Jordan Road or is it is it more than Jordan Road and it's coming it's down? Almost north. exclusively Jordan Road. Okay. Jordan Road and the properties on the north side of Jordan Road. Okay. So the mayor. Okay. All right. Any other questions? All right, well, I guess I'm going to first move to waive the second and third reading since apparently the notification letters have already been sent out. <laughs> second. All right. Councilperson Brooker. Aye. Councilperson Benedetti. Aye. Council President Wolf. 
Aye. Councilperson McNamara? Aye. Councilperson Sharp? Aye. Okay. All right, waving, having waived the second and third readings, um, I move to pass this and declare an emergency. As previously stated, the letters have already gone out. So okay. All right. Councilperson Benedetti? Aye. Councilperson Brugger? Aye. Councilperson McNamara? Aye. Councilperson Trim? Aye. Council President Wolf? Aye. Get to work, Mike. <laughs> okay, that leads, that uh, That's it. ends our legislation. Um, I'm going to tack something on just for lack of a better place to do it. Um, as, as, of course, we all know we're here on a Tuesday night. I believe I just need one more month of this. Are you doing December too? Or not? Uh, I will have to check my syllabus maybe the first week in December, but okay. we're done by like December 15th. Okay, so the reason. And that last one, I believe, is turn in your paper and be done. So I think the meeting's the 12th, so I actually put for old business. Can we just go ahead and do November, December? That way our assistant can just do. If everybody's okay with it, let's just get it done for the rest of the year on Tuesdays, and then everybody knows what it is the rest of the year. If, um, I, I mean, I'm, if you I'm guys I didn't, I just, you know, wanted to I know, go back to normal nice. as soon as possible, but if everyone's like, hey, Yeah, it's only Tuesday, one meeting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's only one meeting. in December. Yeah. Some, yeah, okay. some in December, I might, if it's the wrong day, I'm going to have to admit it, because my schedule got moved around. Yes, but you, hospital, Monday but was your issue, wasn't it? Monday is perfect for me. Tuesday oh. would be the issue. Okay, so if we do, if we I'll say December, but if it's only one, if we only have one meeting in December anyway, I, it might be fine. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna move that we uh, move our meetings to Tuesday, as we have been doing, to accommodate my uh, class schedule. Second, and then I'll add on to that. I appreciate it. All right, and seconded. Can I just do an all in favor? Or do yeah. 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 All in favor. Aye. 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 Is anybody opposed? Extensions. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do that for November and December. There are three meetings left, two in November, one in December, and those will all be moved to Tuesday, 7 p.m. Mayor, can I jump in on that? Um, could we schedule that, if everyone's yes. available, defense appeal for November 18th? I thought we should do a special meeting on it. You said okay. November 18th? As long November as you're what, what okay with me not being here, I will That's absolutely fine. not be able That's to fine. be here. What yep. day will November 18th be, sir? That's a Thursday. Um, I'm going to be working probably that evening. How many do you need to be here? Because I will no. definitely not be here. Well, you, Mayor wouldn't count mayor would count towards the number. No. So if they was out, well, we would just need. Well, we need four four four, 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 four. And, okay. But then you'd need a unanimous vote to affect anything. Majority for sure. Majority well, for sure. Well, okay, yeah, if, just if you only have four, you need everybody who's there to agree to, to have make it. I don't know. I don't know. You, you only need a majority of those present, not a majority. I, of it depends on what we're looking at. I'll make sure I know before we have that. It depends on what actions we take, and I'm not sure on the appeal of it. Yeah. We may do, we we may do a, better to move to like early on a Tuesday or something just so that we have. What was yeah, the for Wednesday would be. It was the 18th. It was just a date that worked uh, for them, and it was yeah, before Thanksgiving. Uh, okay. I wanted to get it in for the holidays. Yes. Yeah. And you said November, now. Correct. Correct. Yeah, November. Sorry? So you're looking at that date, right? So you're posting that date? I can post it. Yeah, as long as everybody's okay with the eight with the exception it. of us two, and maybe you can be there, maybe you can't. There, if it's a Thursday, it'll be seven p.m. Maybe six. Six p.m. We can we can pick a time. Yeah. You can pick a time. I'll if I would go see my my, my um the thing is the way my work schedule with nights works is I'll be there Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. So. Is it possible to do like a Wednesday morning afternoon? Because Thursday would be the no. No, no. there's there's we you're just making all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. are, are you what time do you go to work? Could be six thirty, six twenty. I leave okay. at six twenty for you. So, could we inquire with them for the about a Monday? Oh no, then he wouldn't back be there. For you. But she'd be back. But she doesn't matter. I don't count. Yeah. Yeah. Tuesday. <laughs> it sounds like it's going to be December. It could be December too. What Thanksgiving and Christmas? I guess what, here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll talk to both of them and I'll yeah. say if you're comfortable with not a full council being there, we can go on the 18th. If you want full council, or, we can go in December. Because I will get a, the list of availability so that we yeah. can be, try to be as accommodating as possible. Mm -hmm. but Right. Yeah. 
because Joe may be able to be there. I, I don't know. Right. I don't, That's right. If he's not here, we, I mean, so you may have five. All right, uh, let's, we'll talk about that. So email me and then I can, or just perfect. email everybody yep, um, if we want to get one alternate date and then let everybody decide. Mm -hmm. But I think sure. as you get closer to the holidays, you're probably going to be missing somebody mm -hmm. most dates. Um, okay. Are, have we gotten into old business? That's what okay. I'm, yep, we're in old business. Yeah, so I just wanted to Go give ahead. a reminder to people of council that one of the agenda items for the November Saturday work session was to discuss rules of council. Yes. And I had asked you all to review them and bring your ideas because what we will discuss are the changes that you bring. We are not gonna review the whole of rules of council because that's a whole lot. So bring bring your thoughts. And I asked Diane to update the calendar for us um, and she said that she would do that that's as well. That so if you don't awesome get a chance to do that, let me know. That is something I suck at. Yeah. Okay. That was my only old business. Okay. Um, all right, anybody else for old business? So well, I, I'd like to get an understanding of the, that first ordinance that we were talking about with the, you know, we're hiring someone to give us financial yeah. or, yep. so, you sure. know, I wasn't in the... That's okay. So the finance committee is working towards uh, investigation of financing for the community building and the lake projects using uh, financing against future revenues from the tip. But to get that kind of advice, we need to step outside of the regular bond council that we would normally use and go to a financial advisor. That is a legal requirement because the kind of financing we're talking about is beyond the scope of a bond council. And so Frost Brown Todd also has a financial advisor group and so this would be a contract with their financial advisor group, so they may advise us on additional financial instruments. Okay, I, I understand all that. What I'm I'm not understanding is, you know, it's like three hundred dollars an hour and a limit of five thousand dollars is okay. what I remember. Well, there's a range of cost per person. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. I'm trying to understand. I mean, how much time does it take to I would think in an hour you could go through and say, all right, this is your options. Well, I don't do that for a reason in that that practice area, but they have to run all sorts of spreadsheets on it, and as I understand, all sorts of percentages. They want to give you a range of options, and so those, you know, we might they might take a bath on the five thousand. To be honest with you, they might, you know, they hit the hourly rate, but we're not going to. You can't exceed the five thousand, but they may may work more than the. The hours well, would add up. I, mean, I just I figure this say three hundred dollars an hour divided by five thousand. I mean, how many hours does it take that's to like try to about fifteen? That's, yeah. that's only two days. Yeah, that's yeah. not a lot of time. That's not that's not a lot of time. Okay. I, I, so, I, I, so uh, you know, we, we would anticipate what, are they getting on the phone and calling up. Hey, I, that's what I'm just not grasping what they're doing. That's what I'm not understanding at all. So Is that they're giving us advice yeah. on ways. I mean, can't you just go? You know, I wouldn't say go to a bank, you know, aren't they the person that you would talk to? No, these, no this because is, they could be one range of is, options. This is right. well beyond the scope of any retail banking service. A retail banking service has their products and their products only. Yeah. Right. So they may have certain things, you know, anytime you do anything, you want to research multiple options. You don't just want to go to one bank and say, what's the interest rate and what's this and what's that and then move forward. You actually want to look at all these different ideas and a financial advisor is going to look at all of those different ideas for you. Yeah, we're special as, as a municipality. You are in a special category of what options, what instruments you can utilize beyond your commercial entities and beyond your obviously residential entities. So, so you need a specialist to be able to tell you. And legally, the bond council can't give you financial advice. So you have to have a financial advisor jump in there for the purpose of giving the council the range of options, and then the council gets to make the decision. Right. Not only a range of options, but also an advice on here are all the options, here's what they will all cost you, and as a financial advisor, I can tell you this one's probably the best one for these reasons. And that's all the kind of things that we're expecting. Now, you know, I, I did you say a bond? Bond council. Bond council. So, so in the past, so like the last time we did any kind of bond work was when we were trying to buy 2999 Double Granville Road and we engaged the bond council at Frost Brown Todd 
and they're the ones that did the legwork to draft the bond agreements to issue that public debt. But that's a whole different no, kind of that's thing. That's not what we're doing. That's not what we're doing. Right. We are we are looking at a different kind of financing that will not encumber our bond limit uh, and allow us to borrow against the future revenues of the TIF. Clear as mud. <laughs> if, if you'd like, you are welcome to come and have a beer at my house, and I will bring out my little finance books from college, well, and we can, uh, we can go I'll, through. I'll start looking at this. But all right. That's all I have for old business. Okay. Anybody else for old business? New business. Well, one thing we didn't do is we were going to talk about the newsletter uh, will be coming out. Um, When's the deadline? November 3rd is when everything needs to be in. November 3rd? The day after the election, so we can post the election results. Perfect. Mm. Great idea. So, yes, hopefully we'll have great news about also the, uh, hopefully the levy will mm -hmm. the news on that. So, for the newsletter, um, I uh, probably should, um, it'll be too late to talk about the levy because it'll be just, right. mm -hmm. I don't know what we're going to say. If, but uh, I'll leave a space just in case, just to say thank you or to say no at the next. So we'll see you at the next election. <laughs> so see you, see you next time. Yeah. So from this uh, from this meeting, there are a number of things that just we could talk about that we talked about, and that I could mention the idea of the Juneteenth. I could mention the just th that there's councils thinking about this. Uh, councils also still thinking about TIF funds. Uh, I thought maybe it'd be good to, because we always, we had this, it got so snarky the last time we had pol political, uh, um, where we had signs. And people got snotty about how long signs could be on uh -huh. in people's yards. And of course, I noticed no one's mentioned this, even though some people have signs out in their yard. So, uh, you know, uh, I didn't know what, I think we should say something in the newsletter about, of course, we'll be at, sorry, we have the election, but do we want to say anything in this meeting about signs, or how long signs can so be Yes, we'll be, be happy to say it. So they can keep the political signs, the free speech signs out forever, until at such time that they become tattered and worn and we can consider them a nuisance. But as long as they're well maintained, political signs are there forever. Well then why was it that when Our code is old and has the wrong has the wrong language and it needs to be adjusted. And we've already talked to legislation. Yeah, we've we brought it up on legislation. So um, our code no, no yes, longer conforms to what the Supreme Court so will be changing it as to signs people can have in their yes. backyards. So that is a work in progress that we have already tackled. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Our tackle. Yeah. 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 There's draft language from yeah. plan yeah. zone. There, there, there should be some recommendation on the Yeah. 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 I have from Eric, and we're, we're working for it right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a mess the last few years. Right. Okay, so we're working on draft languages for signs, and uh, at the at this time, signs can stay out there. It's political uh, signs. Cool. Yeah, free speech, political signs. Yeah. Well, commercial signs. We we love everybody. Is that a political sign? It is. It's it's a free speech sign. Free speech. Free speech. So yeah. political free speech are one and the same. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Religious signs are one and the same. Free speech. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Free speech. Whereas if it's okay, commercial that speech, that yeah. may be something or different. Or it's Abel Rufi. Or somebody's got jobs. Or somebody right. wants you to. There, there, the there's a sign that signs, right. a couple of signs that yeah. show up right yeah, 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 jobs. Now that, that would be enough. Right mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. So then we can do the engineering update. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we can include that and uh, mention the surveying on Jordan Road. Um, and what else? You know, I, I gotta go back up because I, you know, putting up signs in the right of way is still not a Oh, that's, that's, a, that's yes. a totally different ballgame. Yeah. That's yeah. not allowed. She was talking about the yards. Let's talk about well, the yards. But, but that's in the right, because I saw Westerville last year going down the road and taking every sign, political or whatnot, yeah. that oh, was yeah. in the right of way. Yeah, right. Oh, you can definitely do that. Yeah, we, we, we'll, we'll have a conversation with folks. We put something in the newsletter about signs that really shouldn't be in the right. We, unfortunately, mm -hmm. we don't, uh, uh, the news section is going to be more TV. TV. 
Yeah, that's correct. Uh, it's about 10 to 15, depending on where it's at in the old village. I don't know how much you want to fit in there. People aren't going to take a wheel out from the edge of pavement. We typically simply go to the door. We simply talk to them and say, hey, you just got to pull it back. You know, people, most people who have done it in previous years know better at this point. So well, I'm just thinking, if we're going to start publishing what you can and can't do, we ought to you put dot not in the right of way. Yeah. I, I, I'd be putting my money on it for people who haven't already met us, that they, the new residents typically stick in the right of way when we go talk to them. So yeah, by all means, put it there. Don't put it in the right of way, and if they don't know what that means, we'll, we'll find them and talk to them. Right. Since this will be after the election that the news business newsletter is published, um, we can hold off on this and put in something on signs after mm -hmm. it's been solidified. Yeah. Just make sure you get the language well, right. Well, what about the once we pass the new sign? Yeah, right. that might be the better yeah. time to do it because there's there's an ordinance change coming, and so once that ordinance change comes, it can be a, an article expressing what this means. Okay. And we've entered the 21st century in our sign code. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we'll do an update on like a leaf pickup and how that's going. Yeah, we'll see how that goes over the next week or two, and we'll get an update with that. Make sure Wednesday is still working. Tomorrow? Suppose. Yes, he will be here tomorrow because I also, since we're in old business and we're headed to new business. Um, we have a tree that fell, so we'll be asking Brad to give us an estimate because it's in the lake. So mm -hmm. it's half in the lake, half out of the lake, and it's more than what we can handle. So Brad will be giving me an estimate to get that removed as well. Wait, in the north or south? I couldn't tell from the picture. I didn't see oh. it. I, uh, if I had to guess, I'm going to go with South Lake. But I, I, don't, I don't know. We'll see if I get a text here in a minute saying no. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually how this works. When I say it and somebody's watching, they're like, no, you're wrong. Okay. All right. All right. New so business. old business, new business. So now we'll just open it to old business, new business. Anybody have any more business? Any business. Monkey any business. business. Monkey business. Monkey business. Oh, on the um, on the um, minutes. Yes. Somebody different did that. No. Because it was a ver. It was lovely, but it was a verbatim, and so. I mean, it was a verbatim, almost like a transcript, and it used different little symbols on it, so I thought maybe someone different did it. No, I will say, was there a Mike Flickinger update, though? Um, I gave her, like, Mike's actual report, so some of those things that came in, I actually gave her some of that. Um, so if it was something like I read or whatever, but no, she... No, this was a verbatim, so no, all no. I'm saying is that, that, that those take more time, they're not required, and... Um, so you might want to just think about that because that probably took twice as much time as, as is necessary. Well, again, it's very nice. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary. Well, you can go both ways on that, and I mean, it's nice to have an understanding. Right. Of it's just a matter of what, how much you want to, time you want to spend. Time is money, and right. limited resources in the village. You don't have to do a verbatim. I can say I like. I mean, it reads very nicely, very detailed. I out. thought it was great. So there you go. Okay. So old business, new business. Anybody else? Trick or treat still tomorrow. Thursday. As Thursday. of right now, trick or treat is still Thursday. However, we have noted that um, places like New Albany have already switched to Sunday from four to six. Does anybody want to hold anything right now? I was planning on making an announcement by tomorrow, um, noonish, something like that, to make a decision. The only reason is um, it keeps changing whether or not it's going to rain Thursday night or not. I'm, it's going to be cold regardless. It's still showing. It's not real cold. Yeah. Oh, no. It, well, guess what? Right. It's Halloween. Thur it's off Thursday. Thursday, so I have 64, so it'll be in the mid 50s. Yeah. yeah. Mid 50s, 60s when the sun's going down. Uh, and Sunday 50s. shows sunny, so I mean, again, I, I don't have kids in the game anymore, so you know I hate to be the one to make the decision, but I get to make the decision. I do know some have already changed to Sunday. Um, so I guess here's how I'm gonna say this. If nobody's living or dying by it, I'll make a decision by tomorrow around noon, one o'clock, something like that. Yep. Actually, it'll be after that because I'm gonna be downtown at noon. Um, so maybe I'll say by three o'clock tomorrow, we'll make a decision and get it posted on the website, posted everywhere, if we're going to change it, or if we're not gonna change it, we're just gonna say, look, we're sticking to it and don't call me again. Yep. I'm just kidding, I wouldn't say that. Um, so we will get that updated and just so everybody knows one way or another. But again, some have already changed it. Sorry. All right, citizen so comments. Yeah, yeah, go right ahead. Give us your uh, name, address. Huh? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's good. Robert Segovia, 3090, Minerva Lake Road. 
Um, I've mentioned about some of some disparaging and uh, the meaning type comments that were mentioned regarding you know, recent council meetings with respect to the four residents. I'm going to relate like Brandon Farview regarding the right way long Farview. Most of these comments were made before any of us actually spoke with anyone at the village. You know, before I came to the council meeting and spoke here in citizen comments on September 19th. Uh, since then, you know, one of the residents uh, has focused on there. And I've heard more than once that how wonderful the person was. And some of you met one of the other residents last week. You know, to me, to me, you know, comments like that before any in-person interaction regarding the situation indicate some kind of a preconceived negative bias towards residents that exist in the village administration and or council. Yeah, at the last council meeting, uh, it was mentioned about reverting estimated quarterly tax payments. You know, the mayor said she had talked to Rita and said that Rita told her, you know, they want you to make the quarterly tax payment, but you do not have to as long as you pay by January 15th, you're not penalized. I had sent an email to the mayor regarding estimated quarterly tax payments. You know, it had some, contained a couple links, um, including one in Rita specific to Miller Park that state estimated tax payment requirements. Quarterly payments of estimated tax must be made regardless of the anticipated amount owed. Again, whether the reading or the village pursued resident pay and estimated taxes is another story. Yet it seems it would just be best for accurate information to be provided. Now, I have no idea why the mayor was told whatever she was told by someone from Rita. You know, but it seems that um, the, what I provided is what's actually stated on, on the Rita website and why they're saying something that kind of contradicts that, I have no idea. Okay, but I think it demonstrates how people in positions where people rely on accurate information where it seems they should know the information or have access to provide that information, you know, decide to present their own opinion instead, regardless of accurate. Then other people just sort of follow blindly and propagate and spread the information that's not really accurate. Okay, I was aware of the basic requirements of the estimated tax payments and why I mentioned what I did at the last council meeting. Yet it seemed like I, instead I got a response that downplayed what I said and made it seem like what I said was not accurate. Made me feel like I was being chastised for trying to provide accurate information. Now I was not saying, hey, you're wrong or you don't know what you're talking about or anything like that. You know, I was just stating what I believed to be the legal requirements. That's all I was doing. You know, I just thought it would be beneficial Regardless of whether, you know, how, how you want to do your tax, that's really your business. That's not my business. You know, I just thought it'd be good for the accurate things to be presented. And that's your time. All right, thank you. Any other tips and comments? Can I see this, cool? mm -hmm. this is the coolest yeah. toy ever. What happened to the old one that we had? It broke. Listen. It broke. Uh, this was, if we knew how to close it, shut it off, it would be an like amazing uh, toy. Uh, are there citizens in, the in, in, uh, in attendance? Do you have any citizens' comments for this evening? Thank you for coming. Right. Thank, Thank you for, you for coming. coming. Then I move we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Let's go.